Hi everyone, Garrett Murren here, and today we're going to look at a case of stroke resulting in headaches and a loss of visual field, which was kindly submitted by Dr. Larry Wallace. For a medical history, we have a 68-year-old female with early glaucoma, high blood pressure, heart disease, and diabetes. The start of care symptoms and findings, well, she'd had a stroke five months prior to the start of treatment, resulting in the headaches and the loss of visual field. So by loss of visual field, I mean she had a blind spot in her field of vision corresponding to where the stroke occurred. And as you can see here in this picture, she lost the left side of her visual field due to a stroke on the right side of her brain. And if we look here at this diagram, you'll notice the area indicated by the yellow circle is going to correspond with this area of the brain, which is where the stroke occurred. And it affects the right nerve pathways uh, in both eyes. And if we look now to this slide, this is the general area the stroke occurred, and this is where the treatment was administered. Now with respect to treatment, there were 12 treatments done in total, once per week, in office. Uh, the treatments were about 5 minutes each, scanning at 50 hertz on both sides of the head, as indicated here by the yellow lines. And in addition to this, 5 minutes at the site of the stroke, as you can see, indicated by the yellow circle also 50 hertz. This is adapted from Neurology 3 on pages 214 and 215 of your user's guide. And now to touch briefly on the rationale behind the stroke treatment, we have the synergy of the coherent multiradiances. And as you can see here in the illustration, the ultrasound, magnetic field, infrared laser, and color LEDs operate together. And their combined general cellular effects are illustrated here, metabolism, ATP synthesis, and neurochemical messaging. And today we're going to touch on two of these in relation to the case report, ATP synthesis and neurochemical messaging. And stroke results in a major loss of cellular energy stores in the brain, in other words, a major cellular energy deficit. You can see here, if you relate this to a fuel tank, when the fuel tank is full, this is good health. And the lower the gauge goes, the worse the headache symptoms become. And so it's no surprise that she has headaches after a stroke. Now we'll take a look at a transcranial laser treatment restoring ATP levels after a stroke. And this is from a paper by Lapchak in 2010. As you can see here in this graph, the vertical lines to the left indicate the ATP levels in the brain. The far left bar highlighted by the yellow is the before the stroke or normal healthy levels. Next we have the lowest energy levels. And this is after a stroke. Following on from this, uh, we see the results of transcranial laser treatment, meaning they didn't do any hole, drill any holes or nothing invasive. They just placed the laser applicator on the skull. And there's a major increase in cellular energy stores. And we see the same again in laser 2, only with more of a result. And in this case, uh, laser therapy not only restored ATP levels back to normal, but 77% beyond normal levels. And this is critical when it comes to healing. And so this touches on the ATP synthesis aspect of treatment. If you look here, you'll see the heading indicates response of neural stem cells to chemical messengers, that's on the left, and infrared light, and that one's on the right. In this experiment from Anders in 2008, the neural stem cells are grown in a petri dish with chemical messengers or growth factors. That's the one on the left. Whereas on the right, the neural stem cells are grown with light alone. And that's instead of growth factors, and you can see they're doing very well with the application of light. I'm pointing this out because not only is the body, uh, like we saw in the last slide, being supported to increase cellular energy stores, but it's also being supported in the regeneration process as well. And if you remember the rationale behind the slide, uh, I'm referring to the neurochemical messaging aspect of treatment. And so now that we touch on the rationale, let's look at the results. With the final progress check, uh, there was testing done, and the testing revealed that the visual field was completely restored, back to normal. And also the patient reported the headaches were now much less frequent and much less intense. And a doctor in the case reported that this was a substantial improvement, and this was with 12 treatments once per week in office. And the patient, well, she reported that she's very happy. So I'd like to say thank you everyone for your time and attention and a very special thank you to Dr. Larry Wallace. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.